Well, we're here at the B East with the Scarvanders, and we're backstage in the band closet, all crammed in here nice and tight. They're coming up to about the 10th year in playing around the Melbourne circuit. Uh, when you were forming the band, was it a conscious thing to be playing ska music, or did you form the band and then fall into the genre? No, no, it was actually, the band started uh, at the... Um the scar bar that we were talking about yep. before. Yep, sure, run right out the, the outhouse. That's several right, Sharon ago. run a marvellous uh, marvellous monthly night there that I spent many a night in oblivion, which was fantastic. <laughs> and uh, that's where I met Stevie. And uh, at that time in Melbourne, there wasn't really any two-tone or sort of traditional ska bands around at the time. So uh, we got together um, and then um, we played, basically it was two-tone ska and we were writing our own tunes as well. Today is a bit of a day, people might have seen posters around, they might have heard adverts for SLAM, which stands for Sl Save Live Australian Music. Mm. Now, there's a lot of bit things that have been going on in Melbourne for the last few years. There's been a lot of venues that have been given a bit of grief by residents moving in and complaining about noise restrictions. There's been a lot of changes to uh, licensing and stuff. Um, how do you see this affecting you guys? Uh, well, those people that move in, um, like they are saying, they should move to the country, really. It's you know what I mean? It's just that sure. <laughs> if, if you want to come in and sort of live in, I don't know, groovy land or hipster land or whatever, then that entails music, you know, and it entails a lot of music. And the beautiful thing about Melbourne, I've been here for nearly 20 years, is that the music here is world class. You know, um, and not just in our genre, not just in the Jamaican ska, but we're talking, I don't know, rockabilly, punk, uh, pop, uh, reggae, whatever you like, you know. Uh, there's some top class bands here and venues closing down means that you can't do gigs. Well, they have to be passionate. There's no money in music here. Uh, yeah, I but think the quality of music is good. You know what I've seen? I've been playing this town a long time. It, it's just... It's changed, um, it, but it hasn't disappeared. It, it's the, the venues have got smaller, and what's it's sort of it's been an interesting thing. The bands have actually be, had to become a bit more flexible. Uh, I mean, you can sort of like kick against it and sort of say, "Oh yeah, you know, this is all bullshit," but you got to work with it in the end. You got to deal with it, you know. And, and there's still venues like tonight, this place here. It's a small room, but you can still adapt your lineup and your sound to sort of work that room. Uh, I mean, the days of the big, you know, Bombay Rock used to be across the road, big rock venue, massive PA, loud, full on rock. Those days are gone, you know. It's smaller venues now, it's like the wine bar size. And, but you can still build a crowd, it won't be the same crowd, it won't be like thousands going off, you know, the venue, you know, down St Kilda used to be, all these sort of the, the ballroom, crystal ball and all that sort of thing. Those days are gone. There's smaller rooms now, uh, quieter rooms, but the band have got to be more flexible. And in a lot of bands, you have to sort of like, you've got your 10 piece lineup for your festival gig, and then you've got your four or five piece lineup for a little room like this. Yeah, well, I, I like to think yours is a comfy pair of slippers. Do you know what I mean? For it's, sure. Uh, <laughs> Something you can always go back to. It is, to it's really reliable, enjoy. you know, and uh, we, we've uh, home cooking. It is home cooking, it's biscuit tin home cooking, and it's so biscuit tin and home cooking that it's taken us ten years to actually record the full length <laughs> album, which we're doing at the moment. You know, we've got fifteen tracks, ten originals, and we've chosen four or five of our favourite covers. So you've put out several EPs. Yeah. Um, hopefully, people have heard a little bit. We might even play some during the show. Yeah. Uh, but what can people look forward to on this new album? I reckon what Chris was talking about before those different flavours. You know, it's not it's not going to be a ska album. It's going to be a ska vendors and friends album, and all all the different flavours that that entails. You know, we got uh, we got some reggae, we got some rock steady, we got some ska, we got some rhythm and blues, all within the Jamaican umbrella. Because that's what we love. Loads yeah. of guests, vocalists, uh, you know, coming in. You know, we've got the girls. And yeah, we've got Kenny girls. Simpson uh, yeah. joining us as well. Yeah. Pat Pearl coming in and doing a few tunes. So. It is, it's a bit of a collective and that's, that's the way we like it, you know. Excellent.